Welcome once again to the Spruce Stomper channel. If this video's thumbnail and title look familiar, it's because they are. I was gonna add some content to the original cut and ended up getting busy in YouTube studio without reading and clicked and I deleted the original upload. So I'm re-uploading, little disclaimer now at the front here. Uh, I ended up selling all of these tools to a awesome local gentleman. Uh, we agreed on what the tools were worth and I told him for 50% of that uh, price, he was welcome to have them. He collected the tools with some of his family members so they were they were going to a good home and, and he knew uh, some of the backstory on them. So I'm just throwing this in at the front to you know save any of my loyal subscribers uh, you know watching something they've already seen uh, again. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, by all means, continue on and welcome to the channel. lot of talk about these uh, defining moments in life, uh, days that you're going to remember forever, your wedding day, birth of your kids, that sort of thing. The day that a man gets a piece of equipment with a set of pallet forks on it, that is going to be a life defining day. You're going to remember that forever. Today, I have some very interesting wood tools. Stuff that was made by real craftsmen back in the day when you probably had to make a tool so you could make the tool to make a tool. You know what I'm saying? Real craftsmanship, real quality, stuff that just doesn't exist anymore. So the, the reason I love the older tools and to talk about that sort of thing is it really truly does give me, a, a, I have a, a great appreciation for the kind of quality uh, that goes into that sort of thing and the type of men that would have made those tools, used those tools, and built the things um, you know that are in our country that we get to enjoy today. So that's that's a good portion of why I love those old tools. I feel they have a story behind them. I think they represent a a, a work ethic and a brand of people. That, you, that you'd want to be around, you know, that you'd want to be part of because the further we go down the hole of things being ordered online, things being bought instead of made, and a lot of things in the trades that truly represented craftsmanship right down to the very tools themselves are so easily lost so that another generation won't understand what that was about, what those tools were for, and what the men that made and used those tools were like. So the nature of the videos uh, so far, of course, have been outdoors, and uh, you know, I don't uh, wanna spoil that for the viewership. I like to be outside, and I thought, why would I look over these tools inside, stuffy indoors, when I could be out here breathing fresh air, uh, you know, risking my life on this slippery ice. Because again, when you have pallet forks, your workbench can be anywhere. Come here, girl. You guys seen the other video, that little the little black dog, Rodeo, my dog? Here's the other, here's the other part of the team. We're a poodle family, I guess. Yeah, you're a good dog. Yeah, look at, and you're prettier than that other black dog, too. Yeah, not quite as dumb. Not quite as dumb, oh yes. So like I was saying, uh, most of these tools actually have the uh, maker's information stamped right in the end from the company back in the day. Uh, Buck and Co, Whitechapel Road, England. And I did a little bit of research. Um, back in the early 1800s, uh, they started out and it was known as Buck and Company. And then uh, that was a shorter period of time, and then it progressed into uh, what it is now. It still exists, uh, Buck and Hickman, Whitechapel Road, England. And these also have in the ends, you probably can't see it, but stamped in all of them says V. Bain. And I looked and looked and looked, V. 
dot Bain, B A Y N E. And I would say because this tool was all in a lot together in a box that it's either a company or it's an actual individual that owned the tools. But of course, my, uh, what am I saying? Research, my Google searches, right? Came up fruitless. Um, a lot of other markings, all the steels in the uh, planes, they have the maker's mark all stamped in them. Now, again, the comment section of YouTube, that's what it's for. You can, you can correct me as much as you like because I don't know what I'm talking about. This is some sort of plow plane is my understanding. This is the guide fence. Uh, and then the knife and the wedge to set it all. This is adjustable all brass hardware um, but I mean to make that tool back when it was made and I don't think any of these the only couple of these then this one and maybe these ones actually say Buck and Co the other ones say Buck and Hickman so dating to to you know more recent they're all quite old um, but I mean, to make this tool, to make this tool or to make this tool, I mean, literally was handcrafted. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of work that goes into this sort of thing. Anyways, let's throw them up one at a time and let's kind of go over what they are. So we have a better understanding of what we're looking at. So the first one up is uh, just a plane uh, it measured in at uh, 23 inches. It's got the, uh, the frog, the steel, and the wooden wedge. I'll take apart a different one that's a little easier to take apart than, than this old girl. This one's pretty wedged together, but... Um, well, I'll tell you what. That's so dull that you could ride it to town. I didn't go to any trouble, no refurbishment, no nothing. I just wanted to... Uh, play around with them a little bit but I mean how could you not appreciate the craftsmanship um, that went into just making that tool like small details like these are chamfered for some reason and they're not mistakenly chamfered like for a reason it was done whether it's just aesthetics or or whatnot so I have that one uh, I have the 18 inch version this one was a little sharper actually That just pops back in there like that. And then you take your wood wedge like that. And then you'd set your depth out the bottom by adjusting, adjusting that wooden wedge and then, uh, you know, giving her a pop. So even to use these tools, you know, if you're using these tools uh, back in the day, you know, it's like 1900, the craft to know just how to set that wood plane because now a modern wood plane, and I'll show you, I have a Stanley version here that's a little more modern-ish. It's all adjusted through a fixed machined device. So they'll have a thumb screw that'll allow you to adjust the depth of the, the cut and the blade and stuff like that. So it's a little more intuitive, like it's easier to control. Whereas this, I mean this, a guy would have just had a wooden mallet, tap, tap, adjust, adjust, and uh, to get that set right. Uh, next up here, from what I read, a coffin plane from the shape. And this one I really enjoy uh, because of how much work went into making it. So you have this adjustable th um, bolt here on the front. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna adjust this guide in and out, which allows you, if this is all the way in, then you're reliant on how much blade is sticking out and you can plane a curved surface. And then if you wanted to adjust this, see then you can adjust this shoe out and that will allow you to have that plane ride on that flat surface. And, uh, and of course, take how much bite's gonna gonna grab super dull super dull again i did not fiddle with this at all but i mean don't you just love that if you were here and you could touch this and try it uh it'd give you the fizz i mean it's uh, wonderful again 
marked right in the end, the maker. And again, this V Bane. If there's some guru that happens to watch this video um, that's an expert in these uh, vintage tools and that rings a bell, let me know. It's, it's all over. It's actually stamped in this one three times in a nice, even, like somebody took care to do it. And that, I've got a set of, not a set, but three of these. These are scribes. So basically how this would work is you would set your the width of what you wanted to, to scribe or to mark. You know, adjust your thumb screw. This is all brass, by the way, on the end. Like somebody handmade all of this stuff. This is a brass key, uh, the tool. You would mark it. Also uh, labeled Buck & Co uh, on the side of that too. So you go like this and then you would just run down like that and uh, see that perfectly parallel line to the work surface that you're trying to mark. So if you were timber framing or doing layout for carpentry, these are still useful. Um, I actually have a modern version of this made by uh, Veritas. This jumps a little more modern. Um, everyone's familiar with the Stanley Tool Company. This is a Stanley number 12 scraper. And I wanna say they call it a veneer scraper or a cabinet scraper. There's a number, I think there was like a number 11 and a number 12. There's like three or four variations, I believe. And of course, bear with me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Nice wood handle, brass thumb screws. And these thumb screws just adjust the angle of this scraper. And my understanding, just from what I've read and stuff, I've never actually used one or had a need for it. It would be on a flat surface in this motion to um, smooth out imperfections or clean the surface off of something and that sort of thing. Again, I'm wide open to input. So if you actually know and you're like, man, this guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Well, let me know. But I mean, how beautiful is that? And it's in good shape too, actually. Some surface rust, but the handles are intact, it's not broken, it's not missing any pieces. Has the original casting, the number there, pretty neat. I know what you're probably thinking at this point in the video. You're probably thinking, well, usually we get to see the guy's face a little bit more. And well, don't worry, we'll get there, we'll get there. But do you, you notice over there, just right over there? I'm keeping them pallet forks in frame, you know, for guys watching that were a little bit jealous. Yeah, I just keep being jealous. I'm, I'm pallet fork rich. I'm probably just reaching right across that camera, aren't I? You know, you know when you're sitting at a, like a Thanksgiving dinner and the person next to you goes, oh, don't mind my reach, and they reach over your plate? Everybody minds that. Everybody minds that, so I I'll stop doing it. So picture this molding here. You've got that this more elaborate profile. These are what they would make those with. If you can see that, see the profile there? Same thing, got your wedge got the blade or the knife the wedge is in there it comes out so you can set the depth I'll pull one apart here so you can see what it looks like just like that got the wooden wedge to hold it together now each of these is actually you can see the the tooling marks where these knives have been forged and then ground to make the tool. That's beautiful. Like it's, it's beautiful. All I can think of while I'm handling these tools is that, you know, somebody not only used these to make something that probably was beautiful, but the tools themselves uh, were just an amazing craft in itself just to put these together to build the tool. And they fit so good, I mean, like that, it just like, it's a perfect fit. It just wedges in. So same thing, you'd set your depth. Uh, you know, that one, some of these aren't too crazy to profile. This is, you know, just a simple curve. Let's see if there's a, yeah, they get a little more elaborate. That one, see, very a lot, lot finer kind of detail. I think a lot of them are, well, this one's the opposite of that other one. One's concave and one's convex. A uh, little teeny one. 
I had a few different profiles, different sizes. So interesting. I'm going to um, I'm going to rehome these as a set. Well, now that we've had a look at them, comes the daunting task of rehoming them. So, man, I tell you, I'm I'm actually I might go have a beer first. Actually, uh, if if someone clicks the button, is this available? They should just be deleted from the from from selling anything online ever again. That's you get one chance. Maybe you get a warning. You click it once. And immediately a warning pops up and they go, hey, that was a test. Now stop it. You're wasting good, hardworking guys' time. So cut it out. So as I mentioned too, I'm looking into some new gear. I, well, mainly the same reason I have all those tools. I just like to buy the stuff. I get into something, I wanna buy stuff to go with it. I view it all as tools, but I would like to make these videos the best quality that I can. I mean, I would teach, uh, you know, I'd teach my kids the same thing. There's no point in doing something unless you're trying to do it 100%, 110%, I should say. So the GoPro is awesome. And that's what's going on now. Obviously, audio can be a challenge, I'm finding. Um, even in uh, the edit stage, I mean, I only have the knowledge to adjust and fix things so much. So I'm looking at the uh, the editing side of things. I think that a another camera would be beneficial because the GoPro, and I mean, it has such a wide lens to it that a lot of the stuff, like the close-ups on the tools and things like that, I think I could better capture that with more of an, a dedicated camera, like a, something more specific with an adjustable lens. So I got a few options. Let me know if you have any suggestions you've had success with. I got to do something about the tripod. I mean, things ridiculous. Um, and of course, with the camera, maybe maybe a microphone setup would be awesome—a lapel mic, or or even just a, one of those little little fuzzy boom cattail looking things, um, something like that. Let me know what do you like to see in the video. Maybe I'll take it to heart. I'm honestly just doing whatever I feel like doing. But as far as the quality wise goes, I want to try and hit it with some different angles. Um, so I'm getting different shots, challenging uh, you know, myself so it doesn't just look the same all the time. But uh, anyways, I appreciate you watching and uh, you know, take care.